Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the title of today's video, we are doing true crime and makeup. Uh, I already did a video like this. I mean, we're talking about true crime and we're doing this face. I look pretty crazy like if I'm going to a carnival or something like that. Like my eye makeup is pretty crazy, but it was very hard to do makeup because I haven't done like proper eyeshadow in months, maybe a year. It was very hard, but it was fun. Very hard to do makeup and speak at the same time. Oh my God, but I love makeup. I love true crime. I was looking at this documentary. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about Sophie Tuscan and the murder in West Cork. How I came up with this video because I was watching the documentary on Netflix and I loved it. I would highly suggest to watch it. And I was like, I'll make a video about it because I think it's a very interesting story. So if you want to know about more this merger, West Cork, Ireland in 1996, very small town, small people, just a French woman murdered. And we're going to find out by who, then keep watching. So as I said from the intro today, we're going to talk f about the, I'm going to go in with some primer about the murder of Sophie Tuscan Duplanquil. I hope I said that right, probably not. So how I got into this case, as in like liking it, um, basically I watched the documentary on uh, Netflix. It came up on Netflix and I just watched it. Um, sadly enough, I didn't know about this murder, never heard of it, that's weird because I'm really into like true crime. That's kind of like my thing. So I didn't really know about the murder, like probably knowing myself because I'm always reading this stuff online. But I didn't really like know it into like depth, if that makes sense. So then I was just watching it on Netflix and that's when I found out. So basically if you don't know what i'm talking about the documentary is on netflix and i think it's called like a murder in west cork um so you're free to watch it it's very nice so basically this woman she is french and she used to own this house in like cork in skull i think that's how you say it is skull shoal skull i think that's how you pronounce it anyways it's just a little town in the west of Cork on the sea and she I think she owned the house and she was a French television television producer I think she used to go to Cork just when she kind of needed a break or she kind of had to work anyways that was in her like regular house anyways it was kind of like her holiday home so on the 23rd of December of 1996, so one year before I was born, she was killed outside of her holiday home in West Cork. She was 39 at the time and she actually had a child as well, like she was married and she had a child. Just some background info about the murder. So she was found killed, obviously outside her holiday home at 10 o'clock in the morning by her neighbor and um, the house is kind of like a bit like not in the city center kind of like countryside so you know there, there wasn't like a lot of houses there um so she was basically found kind of like in a lane kind of like a little lane beside her house i'm gonna go in with this color pop palette and she was found like wearing like a night wear like kind of like pajama dress and she was wearing some boots there was like blood stains on the gate, all that kind of stuff. But anyways, they identified her, she was dead. A lot of blood stains. She had laceration, laceration of her brain, a lot of injuries on her face. And about that, it was very hard for her neighbor to recognize her just because she had a lot of injuries on her face. So anyways, there was a lot of rumors. I mean, for a small town, even though there used to be a lot of like foreigner peoples in this town because obviously on the coast of West Coast, you know, a lot of people come in. But um obviously it was a very big murder, like especially in a small town. So basically 
on Jan January 11, 1991, so basically nearly like two, three weeks after the murder, um, a resident of the town, Marie Farrell, she used a public phone and to call, she used a public phone in Cork to call the police and she kind of used like a different name. She didn't say her name was Marie. She just like made up a name. She was kind of like, my name is Fiona. And she said on the phone to the guards that she saw a man, she saw a man the night of the murder at this bridge that is called Kilfada Bridge. Kilfada, I don't know how, if I'm saying it right. It's just like a bridge beside Sophie's house. So she just random, she didn't say what her real name was. And she was like, yeah, I saw this man that night wandering around there. And then obviously she did make more calls using this fake name and at the end the guards obviously like the police identified her who she actually was um i think she just used a fake name because obviously she didn't want to be like you know recognized and all that kind of stuff so there's more than like one people seeing these things like i saw this man or i heard this man on february 4th of 1997 so basically three weeks after marie rings the guards a school boy like just a little boy um malaki reed malaki reed i think that's his name it's kind of like a foreigner name um got a lift home by a resident called ian bailey just like a resident of the town and basically in the car this man told this little boy that he killed sophie so just randomly like they knew each other he said i'll give you a lift home and while he was giving him a lift home, he was kind of like, yeah, I killed that woman. So that, you know, then people started talking, you know, people were like, oh my God, he said this. So Ian Bailey is... The so one of the things I love about this story is that this man, Ian Bailey, and we're going to give a bit of background info about him. He is actually in the Netflix documentary so like they interview him he speaks like you know there's like he's literally in the whole like there's like i think it's like three four episode so anyways he is suspect number one we're gonna give a little bit of background info about him just you know anyways he was going around saying like sometimes to people i killed her just like things like that not sometimes not even like direct like i killed her apart from this episode but like he was kind of like giving hints Anyways, he is a writer and at the time he was a journalist and he used to live in Skull, again, I think that's the name. So he was young at the time, I think he's 64, 65 now, but anyways, this was in 1996, so he was obviously young at the time. Anyways, he did become a suspect. Firstly, because Marie Farrell made that call to the guards and saying that she saw a man on the bridge that night and he did resemble to Ian. And also, like, he was arrested and, like, he had, like, a lot of, like, scratches onto his arms. Like, someone was scratching him, so that was a bit dodgy. And then, obviously, that schoolboy gave the statement that when he was brought home by Ian, just got a lift by Ian, Ian told him that he killed Sophie so that was obviously another like you know clue now apart from like these people saying these things and scratches on his arms there was no like physical evidence as in like DNA or that kind of stuff like you know at the start obviously anyways he was living in Skull and then he he kind of like this woman she owned this house and um, she actually became his partner later but she owned this house and I think like he she kind of like gave like a part of the house to him like like a studio like he was working in this anyways after the little boy like the school boy says oh I got a lift home by Ian and he told me this and this in the car on February 10th he was arrested for the murder of Sophie obviously all these people saying these things he was just arrested but obviously later he was released because um there was no like proof or evidence you know so they arrested him but i think like there's kind of like a time where they arrest you but obviously you know they can't keep you without evidence and all this kind of stuff months go on and we're in april and obviously they're doing exams to sophie's body and as we said earlier she had like laceration to her brain and like multiple injuries but obviously they 
they fi find out that she died from like something hitting her so like an object so an object hit her on her head and that's what kind of like caused that obviously from anyways months go on as well like you know there's a lot of talking again we are in a small town so people are gonna talk we are in january 27th of 1998 so and and ian bailey is arrested for the second time in his life so he's arrested again you know they're trying to like find out like and once again they release some because they have no evidence you know so anyways then there's like a lot of people talking like again time goes on in march 1999 uh a French filmmaker like he was a friend of Sophie he tells the Irish police that Sophie told him um, once that she had a friend called Ian Bailey and he was like exploring like violence in teams of like violence for his writings so we do find out that they knew each other like you know because she said to him that his friend Ian you know? anyways this Ian he's a journalist um you know he rents this studio from this woman Jules to do like his work and later like they become lovers like you know they they start going out they become girlfriend and boyfriend and this Jules in 2000 she's arrested for the second time for like you know obviously guards want to question her her daughter is arrested you know they want to know Anyways, there was a lot of rumors about this Ian, like people just saying weird things, like, you know. And in August of 2001, Ian assaults her girlfriend, Jules, you know, like he beats her up and, you know, he was trying to like, I don't know, they got like into a fight and he assaults her and like, he assaults her and like, he beats her up and he's arrested at Cork Airport and he receives like a three month suspended sentence obviously he's arrested because like you know he just not for sophie but just because i think like she rang the police and she was just like my boyfriend beat me up and all this stuff but obviously he does admit that even though he did stay a lot lot of time with jules i think now they did break up i think this year but they did stay together for like a lot of years and all throughout this kind of stuff with sophie he does admit that that was like the third time like him putting his hands on her so he was very violent um we find out that he was very anyways time goes on and 2002 um sophie's parents you know they start obviously taking legal action towards ian like you know they want ian to pay for what he did all her family um especially her brother they're in the documentary on netflix so obviously they want like justice to be done done so obviously they start taking action you know they want justice for for sophie obviously i'm using my uw beauty concealer and in 2003 ian he takes legal action against eight newspapers because he takes legal action towards them because obviously newspapers did write that he did kill sophie and like for him it was kind of like wrong info like they shouldn't have wrote that all that kind of stuff so he takes legal action against them so he does lose six of those but he does win two also um in 2004 like ian bailey starts taking legal action about like against marie marie farrell that was the woman that made like the anonymous call to the guards saying that she did see a man that night on the bridge and he kind of like tells her that she has to like take back the words that she said against him and she was kind of like no like you know she's in the documentary as well she he, she was kind of like no because i did see you that night so obviously i'm not gonna like you know i'm not gonna say that i lied or i'm not gonna take my words back um in the documentary is actually quite interesting because she does talk a lot and she was kind of saying that you know he kind of like blackmails her a lot he used to visit her where she worked and like if she used to meet him on the street he was kind of like doing things like this like i would kill you i'm coming after you and your family um all kind of like it actually gives you shivers in the documentary when she does talk and saying that he did blackmail her on the street he would like tell her all these things like you know it was very weird but obviously she was kind of like I did see him, 
I know like it was him I did see that man that night so, so there was a lot of questions like Bailey like I don't know he was the prime suspect now in suspect in the in the documentary you're gonna see that obviously he wasn't the only suspect there was nothing major like not like other cases like sometimes they were thinking about his like her sorry her husband stuff like that it could have been someone else but everything always kind of like reconnected to ian bailey like there was nothing else like you know it, there was so many details that would be kind of like connecting to him um for examples he had a lot of details in his articles talking about the murder because obviously he was a journalist so like you know he was writing about the murder as well and there was a lot of details and people were a bit like you know how does he know that another thing that you could see in the documentary and i loved um hearing about that you know when she was murdered um so as soon as like doctors police whatever they went down there he was there as well that was a bit awkward like no one knew and like he made so he knew when he did ring someone he was kind of like a french one woman was killed so he was informed by the murder at 1 40 p.m by a reporter of like the irish examiner and he obviously told bailey about the murder but he did say that he didn't tell him she was french she was just like a woman died like beside her house she was murdered but he didn't say she's French so everyone was kind of like how does Ian Bailey a lot of witness a lot of witnesses that day said that Ian Bailey was telling them that a French woman was killed and this but was before 12 so the reporter of the other newspaper said that he told Ian about the woman 140 Ian was telling people about this murder at 12 o'clock so nearly two hours before so how did he know like how did he know if no one told him like how did he know that a woman was murdered like no one knew just like a few people like how did he know like no one could have told him. and then like how did he know she was French not even the people involved in like examining and all that stuff like they found out that she was French after like how did he know she was French another weird thing is his partner Jules the woman that like gave him the room to like create a studio the woman that then became his partner and the woman that then obviously reported him to the police because she said that he assaulted her three times everything was a bit weird because she kind of like kept changing her statement where he was that night like initially she was kind of like yeah ian was with me in bed that night all night you know like he was at home so he couldn't be outside and then later on she was kind of like after she was kind of like no like ian he got out of bed that night like after one hour they got into bed so they went to bed at 10 and she said that around 11 he got out of bed and returned to bed at 9 a.m and with an injury on his forehead so that's a bit weird i mean you wouldn't know if someone is in bed with you like why when the murder happened she said he was in bed with me all night 100 percent and then why did she say after oh no like he got off bed after one hour and he came back at nine o'clock with a scratch on his forehead so in the documentary he kind of explains this as oh yeah i got out of bed because i couldn't sleep and i was just like working like i was just doing some work even though who goes back to bed at nine o'clock in the morning like that's like 10 hours i don't know that's a bit weird and like if he was only working why didn't she say so like they should have talked like the next morning when she woke up she would have asked him like where were you and he could have said i was working why when they asked her questions she didn't just say oh yeah she got up but he was working like you know he was working why do you have to say no like 100 percent he was with me in bed like that's kind of like a reaction of someone that is scared and doesn't really want to say the truth um like you know why would you say something and then change it so i think that was kind of like something that you know kind of made everyone understand that like she was lying and she was just like protecting him because i mean at the end of the day who says one thing and i kind of don't know like she never said why she changed her you know why she changed idea on like what she said she said this and 
Bailey, Ian, on the other hand, he was kind of like, no, I got out of bed up like before I am. I wrote like a story for like 30 minutes and then I got into bed. So she said that he got out of bed and came back at nine. He said that he got out of bed at four and came back after 30 minutes. So like their stories are so weird. Like, like you know when someone comes back to bed. Like she says 10 hours, he says 30 minutes. She said that he left at 11. He said that he left at four. Like they sleep in the same bed. That's so like weird. That was very weird, I have to say. There's a lot of people that kind of like talk in the documentary as well, kind of like police, like, you know, there's kind of like a detective as well um, that he knew Bailey and visited him as well. And he talks about him. He's actually quite interesting to listen to. Um, in the documentary then, there was like a lot of like rumors um, that I don't really know, but they kind of kept saying that he, he did burn the coat like, there was like a big, like he did like a bonfire outside of his house to burn stuff. And she did burn the coat that he was wearing that night. There was a lot of rumors about that. So anyways, like this stuff continues and goes for like years. Like, you know, it's very unfair that obviously her family doesn't have justice. Like, you know, after all of that time, they kept waiting and sorry they kept waiting like there was no justice for her so anyways no justice like her family knew it was him they kind of like felt it i don't like this lipstick so her family knew it was him they were just like it's him like we know it's him like we want justice so in february 2010 um a judge he issues like a European warrant to like arrest Ian Bailey. So then again in 2010, like after two months, the guards arrest him and they bring him to the guard station. He is brought to high court and he's granted bail. And obviously he is pending to get like a hearing. So then in 2011, the high court rules in favor of the French authorities and they order Ian to like surround and then in March 2012 the Irish Supreme Court rules in Ian Bailey's favour and in his appeal against like extradition extradition from France. In August 2013 French authorities they word 150,000 euro to Sophie's family and in 2019 his trial starts and he's absent like you know he doesn't have to be there and he starts in Paris and on May 20, 31st of 2019 he's found guilty for the murder of Sophie Tuscan. He is sentenced to 25 years in jail by the French court. So in June then obviously the French authorities they issue um, a warrant to obviously arrest Bailey and is his extradition to get him and bring him to France. So then in 2020, Ireland's High Court just says that rules that Bailey will not be extra did it. He like he will not be brought to France. They end all the attempts to extradition to bring Bailey to France. So there's a lot of like, you know, there's a lot of court stuff. Um I think in this case a lot of factors i think the guards they could have done more obviously we're talking about 1996 so things were different back then um we're talking about obviously a small country like ireland like a small town like west cork you know we're not in a big city so everything it's small like the guards you know um i do feel that like Obviously, they should have found more evidence. They didn't really talk about a lot of evidence, but I mean, after Marie seeing Ian on the bridge, after the schoolboy saying that he did say in the car that he killed Sophie, and it wasn't only those two people, like a lot of people brought evidence as in, one night he said this to me, one night he was at a party and he was talking about this. So a lot of people were coming forward saying that 
he used to say a lot of like these like phrases some of them directly like the schoolboy, like he directly said to him that he did kill sophie and a lot of other people even though he didn't say it directly he kind of like made statements around that so i mean obviously people were, ju were just like pissed off because they did like arrest him twice but nothing was ever done like he was just free and um, i loved seeing the documentary i loved seeing him because if you don't know he's in the documentary like he talks and that gives you shiver like just everything about him that he talks and like he goes just in his house and talks about like the case and just the fact that he's there like all the real people are there so sophie's family um her parents not a lot obviously i think it's very majorly her brother and her son and her aunt her aunt is in it as a lot and obviously ian is in it not jules but he and it's just like now and he just talks towards it he's very like i'm innocent obviously it's very hard to talk about this case because there's not a lot of evidence as in like dna or that kind of stuff and if there is they didn't really talk a lot about it um but it's really hard to say he's not innocent for me he did it a lot of people did see him just a lot of evidence that you will see in the documentary just points it out at him i don't know he is a bit of he is a bit of like a weird guy obviously that doesn't mean that like he obviously killed her you know obviously that doesn't mean anything but just everything in like the case like people that did see him there people that the scratches on his hand the girlfriend that said that he was sleeping in her bed and then she changed her idea and she said that he was gone people seen him like people he said that he didn't know sophie but then we found out that he did know her like the fact that he knew about the murder before everyone else that's weird you know there's a lot of stuff um you know i hope this case will be closed and I think in in these cases it's you know it's not fair as in i think family should have more justice because i think it's really hard to lose a daughter especially by murder but like this case went on for like 20 years and for me it was ridiculous they should have been handled it better but um i loved watching the documentary i would highly suggest that and i loved reading on the internet about this case i know it, it was just a case that made me think i want to make a video about it so i hope you did enjoy i hope you enjoyed this makeup I, it's very hard for me to do makeup and speak i have to be honest but i hope you did enjoy it and i'll see you in my next video bye